the truth. Hey guys, what's up, Green Machine Team? Back with another video, and today we have another episode of Washington Football 20 Year Rebuild. We are on season number nine, and as you're seeing, we're trading away some key players. Now, a lot of these guys, the two trades that we have made so far, Earl Gordon and Keenan Bradley and James Keelum, are mainly because of when their contracts are expiring. And we're going to release Michael Jordan here. We had some younger guards on the team, and uh, he just wasn't necessary for our success anymore as well as Jay on brown we're going to release him as well um yeah so the two trades were literally just because they were coming off contract and i can't pay a fourth o lineman keenan bradley hasn't developed enough and as you'll see look at all these players i have to re-sign or let go amon st brown deontay harris pat firmuth uh roquan smith uh joey bosa dexter lawrence gordon davis and even Will Davidson. So there were so many people that I, that I was just like, look, there's going to be some people that we can't trade away just for the simple fact that the team will be really bad if we do. So the two wide receivers, I was okay letting walk. Uh, Dexter Lawrence, Joey Bosa, and Roquan, I was all happy letting walk. But Pat and Gordon Davis were the two guys where I'm like, they're still young enough, they're still going to develop for a long time. They can still be corner pieces of our franchise. So... I was like, those guys have to come. We did sign a new quarterback. He wasn't 76 overall, McLeod, if you saw him. Uh, Dan Carter still starting at fullback. Toller and Saquon Barkley still at running back. Matt Phillips is easily going to be the number one. He's the best wide receiver overall. He has 97 speed. He's fucking great. Luke Boyce, hopefully we'll get some play time here. Uh, did sign some other players here and there, just wide receivers, backup alignment, stuff like that. Uh, backup edge rushers to, you know, just have those players on the team to have extra options and to have a depth chart. Uh, and something else that's going to happen is probably going to be Terrell Henson's probably going to be gone. And we'll probably just keep rotating through offensive linemen because I can't be paying for offensive linemen, especially when I'm already paying Quentin Nelson and Bobby Monroe and Creed Humphrey. If I could definitely make a choice, I would have probably got, gotten rid of uh, Quentin Nelson, to be honest, and kept... Earl Gordon, just for the simple fact, it probably would have been less money, and the fact that he would have been a homegrown player that everybody can root for, but Quentin Nelson had a bunch of money locked up in cap penalty, so I couldn't do it, um, you know, and that's something you have to do, and that's what always bothers me whenever I watch a rebuild on YouTube, which I don't really do anymore, is that people won't trade players away when they're exiting their contract and you don't have value for them and you don't want to be spending that money on them. They'll be like, oh, well, I guess it's off season. I guess I got to re-sign him now. Like, no, if he's bad, don't fucking re-sign him. <laughs> and that's just something that always pissed me off. And that's something I try to do is if I don't have a use for them or if I don't think that they're going to be on the team next year or if I just don't want them to walk away for absolutely nothing, I will go ahead and trade them for anything. Even if it's only a seventh round pick, I will trade them just to get some type of asset in return. Uh, so, yeah. We're going through the depth chart, just setting it up, uh, you know, basically best available at each position. Uh, I was going to make Matt Phillips and Deontay Harris return, but then I'm like, nah, Luke Boyce would actually make kind of sense because then if he gets any skill points or XP from it, then, you know, he's going to develop a little bit better, which is cool. Uh, I'm also working on some draft classes to hopefully better develop players. So when, if you do a long-term rebuild, then you won't run into the, you will have, it will basically be draft classes to reload the roster and to get them in a state where you don't have to worry about whether or not players are going to be good. Because I think Gordon Davis right now is listed as like a top three safety. No, top three strong safety. And it's just like, he's only 86. He was an 86. Uh, and he's 26 years old. And he's the third best safety. And he's only an 86 overall. Like, come on now. Development, regression. It's so bad in Madden. It is. Like, NBA, you can see, like, what they what they try to do, and it makes a lot of sense. Uh, 
it's really hard to get your players up to that superstar level like LeBron James type ratings like 95 plus but you can see what they do and even if there's not players that are 90 overalls in your league you still see them put up numbers like they are 90 overall because it's going against competition it's not set numbers that the computer's just randomly generating and and I think that's what makes 2k a better franchise mode and rebuild and everything and you can put your team as contending or selling or buying or you know whatever to help better the team because if because I could go ahead and put a bunch of people on the, on the trade block but that doesn't help me because I'm going to get fucking shit trades and uh so yeah we end up bringing back Gordon Davis and Pat both key guys to our success uh we ended up going I don't remember what we went actually uh we did end up making the playoffs I think we went 11 and 5 actually now that I think about it um, just going through the schedule to show that I didn't play any games. I knew we were going to probably make the playoffs, so I was like, I don't really want to play any games. Um, I think we're going to make the playoffs anyway, so those will be the games, if even even if it's only one game. So, yeah, so we went 11-5. and five. We did pretty well. We started off the season very slow because I go week by week and upgrade each per- person individually. Austin Hawkinson had 4,000 yards and 41 touchdowns. Saquon with 1,500 yards. 14 touchdowns, Greg Toller with 500 yards, 5 touchdowns, so combined they had 2,000 yards and 19 touchdowns, and then if you want to add in the other 6 touchdowns, we had 25 touchdowns, and just a little bit over, what was it, like 2,200 yards, Uh, Matt Phillips, 1,000 yards, 7 touchdowns, Pat, 800 yards, 9 touchdowns, St. Brown, almost 800 yards, 5 touchdowns, Deontay Harris, almost, what was that? No, just a shy over 600 yards, a couple touchdowns for him. O-line's going to O-line. There's nothing you can do about it. Joe Shields apparently was, well, is it Joe Shields? Yeah, Joe Shields was apparently the best O-lineman out of like 78 overall, so that's cool. Tackles for loss, 16 for Ed Oliver, 14 for Joey Bosa, 14 for Chase Young, 10 for Khalif Hudson, 8 for Dexter Lawrence, 7 for Roquan Smith, and 7 for Deshaun Beckham. Uh, yeah, so we definitely got past the line a bunch and that's good to see but it's just going to suck in in another year when we don't have a lot of these key guys that are on the defense currently like Roke one like Joey Bosa like Dexter Lawrence so Uh, sacks we actually had a decent year in sacks the front four had a combined total of what was it 36 so the front four had a combined total of 36 sacks so that's great um, it's not qu- quite great. I would like all of them to be in double digits around that 10 mark, but it was very close. Interceptions, we had plenty to go around. Four fumbles, none. Block kicks, none. Safeties, none. Touchdowns, none. So our defense didn't play super fantastic, but it did play well enough. J.J. Minyard fucking balled out 12 of 13 and 64 of 64. So we only missed one kick all year. So that 92% doesn't really show the whole story. Will Davidson having another just average year. I don't really know how to put it in terms of punting, so whatever. Uh, let's head over to the yearly awards here. Uh, Hawkinson at number two for MVP went 11 and five. I think if we would have went like 12 and four or even 13 and three, I think we would have won it. He also won Offensive Player of the Year. Michael Cunningham. He is actually the quarterback we had back backing up Hawkinson going into this year, and we released him because of signing the other backup, so Saquon Barkley at 7 as well. So it's good to see him go to a different team and absolutely ball out. Uh, It's always great to see that when one of our former players goes and balls out. We've seen Chris Martin do it. So Eric Ash, number 2 defensive rookie of the year. I don't even know why my Bonnie is trying to act tired. So, yeah. We take on the Saints in this first week. We're just going to hit Phillips here. He's going to pick up a decent chunk of yards down to the 28-yard line. At the 2-yard line, we're going to play action fake. Throw it to Matt Phillips on this little lob pass. He's just going to run under it. 97 speed. He's going to kill everybody. So, in for the touchdown. Like I said, I don't know why my body gets tired in these type of situations. Like, I'm going to be up for, like, my, my, my sleep schedule is so fucked right now. I don't go to bed until, like, 8 a.m. And then I wake up at, like, 4 
to go to work and stuff. So it's like, so it's like, why is my body even getting tired? I still have another seven hours before I go to bed, probably. On the run, I'm going to throw to Deontay Harris, wide open in the middle of the field. Just sit down in the middle, of, in between two zones. They're not going to get you. Madden's broken. Zones don't work. Matt Phillips here, another touchdown. He's good. He, he's a decent-sized wide receiver with tons of speed and great hands. Like You can't ask for more. 38-17 here. Probably should have just stopped playing, but we're going to motion Harris in. We're going to try to throw this little uh, fade route. It's thrown not even high. And uh, Marshall Lattimore has just enough speed to keep off Matt Phillips for a while. I think if I would have had maybe 10 more yards, I maybe could have dove and maybe gotten him. Or if he just had less speed, of course. But 4th and 10, they they came back. 38-31 here. They're going to throw. And uh, they'll complete it to Manuel Sanders up the sideline, down to the 40 now. Remember, I only play the moments. Uh, I play the moments just because, you know, it is a more in-depth. It's like, it's like a... It's a mixture between franchise and rebuild. It's not completely franchise where I'm playing every game, and it's not completely rebuild where I'm playing. I'm only just building the team. So, Sean Beckham's going to get a pick. He was a superstar in the last Super Bowl run, and he's going to show up here with another pick. So, even if he doesn't put up stats in the regular season, which I don't think he did, he, he, he'll he still come up clutch in the playoffs for us, and Matt Phillips will end the game with a touchdown. Next, we had bat. We're still at home, so gonna play action, roll out, getting pressure. Just gonna throw it up. Matt Phillips comes back to the ball. You love to see it when a wide receiver actually does his job and comes back to the ball and doesn't just sit in the fucking spot. Like, oh, this is where he told me to go. Like, Saquon Barkley just gonna reach while Greenlaw tackles him. He's gonna score touchdown. Barkley has been absolutely amazing and. I wish Madden would do a better job at making these running backs actually useful. As Luke Boyce just burns the defense, finds a soft spot in the zone. Deontay Harris also helps with that, keeping the corner entertained for a little bit. Up 28-16 to 16 now, three minutes left. Can the Seahawks mount a comeback? Eh, they probably fucking will. Um, apparently, I accidentally brought Phillips in on a blitz. I was trying to bring one of the safeties in on a blitz, but I guess I brought him. So they are now down only by five. Um... And then it's going to hit this tight end up the sideline, and I don't know where anybody was, and Eric Ash and Jose Ramos can't get to him. Touchdown. Uh, Seahawks now have the lead 31-28. They went for two. They got it. I thought Matt Phillips would be able to go up and get this one. I guess not. Jamal Adams will catch it in route. So I think our playoff losses have only come to the Seahawks or the Panthers. So... And then this was to get a little closer. I figured let's try something stupid here. They went for a block. I went for a quick pass. And then this ball just gets hung up. I probably... I, I, I don't know if I remember... I don't remember if I tried to pull the stick down to like try to... Get a, kick it at a lower angle if it didn't. If I didn't, that's probably why. But I don't think we would have made it either way. I just don't think J.J. Maynard has enough power, especially with almost 8-mile-an-hour wind pushing against you. Um, so, like I said, we have no money, can't sign anybody. So, these guys are walking. Uh, it, it sucks. It's it's an end of a era in Washington. Uh, Roquan regressed too much. Dexter Lawrence regressed too much. Uh, Deontay Harris is already regressing. Amon St. Brown's about to get there. Joey Bose is still elite, but I don't think he's going to be elite for much longer. I think he'll be gone near an 85 by next year or so, you know. And, and again, I can't sign anybody in free agency. We're negative 17 mil in the hole because of all the draft picks we have. So that sucks. Uh, Terrell Hen Henson, we're going to actually decline, and we'll probably trade him going into next year. Uh, we'll start the Noah Edison guy that we drafted with Joe, what was it, Reed? Our right guard. So... And there was nobody on the board that I had to have. There was no great linebackers. There was no great... Uh, there was nothing good enough to make me want to take somebody. And this was probably one of the best players. And we have to get another wide receiver. I think Luke Boyce is amazing. I don't think he's the future. 
Uh, so we end up taking Steven Street here, 95 speed, 95 acceleration, 80 is basically across the board for his core attributes, which is great. Um, yeah. Mike Lowell, 23 years old, out of Texas, power rusher, six foot three, 274. Um, Got to replace Joey Bosa. He's number eight in the class. Took him at number 24. I think he's good. Uh, finesse moves, play rec, awareness, walk shed, the main things. Just need to be upgraded after that. He'll be a fine player. Jay Butler, another center. For some reason, centers are really good in this fucking, uh, just just in this game. Uh, to draft, uh, they're they're better than the tackles because apparently because last year I think it was guards that were the good O linemen to draft, and the year before that it was tackles, so now it's centers, so just gotta move them around. Uh, we're gonna take Calvin Davis here, middle linebacker. He has star or better, five foot eleven, two hundred twenty nine pounds out of Penn State, eighty seven speed, seventy nine tackle. He looks very good. Uh, man of coverage sucks, but hey, I, I'm not gonna be a asking him to fucking man up against the slot uh, wide receiver. We're going to take Brandon Ellibri here. Uh, pick number 13 in the second round. Six foot two, 235 out of Michigan. 21 years old. No dev, dev trait. 26 years old. I mean, number 26 in the class. Talking about 46. Again, another solid guy. And we're not asking him to play coverage all the time. We're asking him to be a run stopper. We're asking him to be that leader on the defense. So... The rest of the picks we ended up just trading away into for a seventh round pick because, you know, I just didn't need any of it. And take the San Francisco 49ers pick here. Trade down with the Bucks for a first round pick of next year. Two twos and a three gets me that. Um, two threes and a four gets me a two from the Eagles. So, yeah. Uh, so, we're slowly starting to build the team back up. Of course, we we lost a lot of key positions, of course. Um, this one I just didn't care about. I was just like, just get me out of this fucking shit. Just let me trade my picks. Let me get what I want and get me out of here. So I'm just trading down at this point. Jonathan Payne was a late first round talent kicker. 72 overall. We took him at, I don't remember. He was number 28 in the class. It didn't, I couldn't read it fast enough. And we're going to send him the next pick. Take the punter that I want. Even though we do already have a kicker in JJ Maynard, it was just a chance like, Hey, let's just throw some shots in the dark. Let's take the two best kicker and punter and see what we can do um we'll probably move the kicker to punter and just be like and, and if you want to say that's not realistic look at pat mcafee he's probably one of the best punters ever and uh he didn't know how to fucking punt and him is him and his dad had to go to his old high school field after he got drafted after he told the colts he knew how to punt okay so don't sit here and be like kickers don't know how to punt they can learn if you're a good enough kicker or a punter you will learn Steven Streets will be rocking number 11. He looks pretty decent, decent size. Um, he's all around good, so I think he can be great. I think he'll start in the slot right away, day one. Uh, Matt Phillips will be the number one wide receiver. We'll probably start Streets as well at the number one spot just to get him more reps. Mike Lau, left end, number 92. Looks like a beast. Hopefully he will be a beast across from Chase Young. Uh, Jay Butler, number 74. Out of Bama, left-hander guy. I don't know if it actually lets you snap left-handed in Madden. I don't think it does. So, you know, his accessories might need to be flipped. but And his handedness might need to be flipped. But who knows? Maybe it does. Calvin Davis, number 54, out of Penn State. This is the guy with star better. Hopefully he has better uh, than star. Like I said, I'm working on a draft class right now to hopefully uh, better fight the progression and regression of these long-term rebuilds. Uh, Brandon Alibre, number 58, out of Michigan, looks like a beast. I think he'll play pretty well in the system. I think he'll be a career backup, but who knows? Khalid Hudson's getting older. I think he's 31. Uh, Cody Carter's about to come off contract. Do we want to keep him? Jonathan Payne, kicker, number one. He'll probably move the punter for us. Jimmy McCord, number four, out of Georgia Tech. He'll probably get released and put on practice squad. But with that being said, guys, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Turn on no post notifications if you guys want to be notified anytime I post a video, any roster updates, or anything else like that. Follow on Twitch for some live fun. But with that being said, guys, I'm out. Peace. Oh.